We're finally getting around to Dominion 2nd Edition. It takes the best things about this beloved deck builder and makes it even better. So, let's get into this classic. The goal of Dominion is to have the most points, aka land, in your kingdom, aka your deck of cards. On your turn, you'll draw until you have 5 cards, using those cards to perform actions and buy more cards. Every turn has a limit of playing one action card and buying one card from the supply. But those limits are easily increased by action cards, which tend to grant extra actions and buys in addition to unique beneficial effects. All cards will have a value on the bottom left showing how much they cost. Simply discard your money cards to buy whatever you can afford from supply, where your purchase then goes to your discard. At the end of your turn, you will also discard the rest of your hand and then draw back up to 5 cards. Now it may seem kind of weird, like why am I discarding these cards I'm buying and the rest of my cards? Well that's because once your deck runs out, you shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck. And that's it! Dominion is literally just draw five cards, play some random actions, throw money at stuff, draw five cards again. Players are probably not going to buy point cards initially because they literally don't do anything until the game's over and you check your score. So players will want to buy stronger money and more actions initially to eventually buy the best land for your kingdom, provinces. And once this province pile runs out, or any three piles of cards runs out from the supply, the game ends immediately. Count up all of those green land cards in your deck to see who has the noblest kingdom, aka who exploited feudalism the hardest. Onward to the review, but before we actually jump into it, we want to address some cool changes that 2nd edition made compared to our OG 1st edition copy here. Firstly, they revamped the art on a money, a curses, a victory point cards, just touching up where the game might have felt a little drab initially. Text has been cleaned up to be less confusing, and fonts bigger to make more use of that empty space. There's also now a trash playmat included, instead of the tiny first edition trash card, which actually just gives you a proper space to dump cards into trash when you do that stuff, which, by the way, trashing is different from discarding because trash cards are straight up removed from the game. So yeah, some actions are pretty crazy. The rulebook was also improved and simplified because it used to be two booklets with crappier wording. We got a minor rule change too, where now you have to shuffle your discard back into the deck if you would empty out your deck with a card. What does that even mean? Okay, example time. If we have a smithy here that draws you three cards, but you only have one card left in your deck, you have to shuffle in your entire discard to make a new deck before you actually draw three. So, you don't get to draw that last card. And before we get to the new 2nd edition cards, it's funny how the back of the rulebook does some of that self-promotion now that Dominion has been expanded like... I don't even know how many goddamn times at this point. I'm pretty sure a good ballpark estimate I'd say is like, uh, 180 billion. Uh, I think there's like 12? Not including promos? Eh, close enough. Anyways, to get started with the dummy thick amount of expansions, essentially we got a buying guide here to follow gameplay themes to your liking, which is helpful because it's overwhelming to tell which expansion should be the first one to get. So now we get to 2nd edition's new cards, which have been really exciting to look at because we've owned 1st edition for about 7 years now. Gosh, yeah, we kinda are monsters for playing this hundreds of times without buying any expansions. So they took out 6 cards and added in 7. We have no problems at all with removing these 6, as they were typically never used because they were just so underwhelming and or unfun. For example, Thief has been replaced by Bandit, a card that no longer unintentionally helps your opponent by trashing their weak coppers, and guarantees an amazing gold card for the person who played it. The designer, Donald X, really sums up the Thief never being bought when he says, uh, in most games it just sits there. I could do better. And better he did, like what about this awesome new card called Poacher? This encourages player interaction, since you may want to start emptying piles of cards to weaken others Poacher's engines. Funnily enough, its pile is typically the first that runs out in a game because it's just that good early game. A similar unique design to Bandit and Poacher are in all the 7 new cards, 
which are all fun to play around. So now onto the pros of Dominion itself. And right away, 2nd edition is going to mimic the best parts of 1st edition with the components. The cards are all great quality that can take a lot of shuffling abuse, and the box is excellently organized. Like, every single type of card has its own cubby, and the cards don't fall out even when stored sideways. Also, just like 1st edition, you get the stack of dark blue cards, which you can use to randomize your setup for every single game. Super convenient, so you don't have to stick your hand in the box and try to randomly pick piles to use. When actually playing, it's really easy to rope people in because the game is easy to understand. All you're doing on a turn is playing actions, and then buying something. That's it! This is a super simple turn structure that newcomers can typically wrap their head around, even if they haven't played deck builders before. This will allow these newcomers to easily focus on the supply piles everyone is buying from. It's also easy to get people to play with you because Dominion never feels like it drags. Once you get a feel for all the cards and aren't spending time reading every single supply pile, Dominion runs pretty true to its listed time length of 30 minutes or sometimes even less. But an awesome thing about Dominion is that the players can dictate the length of the game with their purchasing habits. If they decide to empty out a bunch of inexpensive piles like Moat and Cellar early, the game can end much faster than 30 minutes. If they decide to block other players and slow down their decks, the game is going to run a little over 30 minutes. Okay, so that's all the pros of Dominion, at least according to our initial review of Dominion about a year and a half ago. Man, that was our first review ever, and it's pretty crazy how far we've come. Dude, I remember we didn't even script our reviews and I was just going off of pure bullet points. I also remember they took goddamn forever to film because for some stupid reason we just kept moving the cameras around and starting and stopping every two goddamn sentences like, What was that about? What, what even is this angle? So now that our reviews are less pee pee poo poo, here are some more pros we found for Dominion. First, and I don't know how we didn't talk about this on our initial review, like, dude, Dominion has so many fun decision making opportunities. You can typically always buy something on your turn and you have so many options on what to buy because like there's always 10 action cards, there's those multiple victory point cards, and then there's the better money options. Then there's sometimes the ability to buy multiple things a turn if you have extra buys and you can even buy copper for zero cost if you really want to stack your deck thick to get points with the garden VP card. There's a ton of diversity with the action cards in general, from stuff like the Chapel, allowing you to trash cards from your deck permanently, Militia, attacking all of your opponent's hands, and massive drawing power with a card like Smithy, which draws you three cards. Take that, pot of greed. So then, of course, we gotta talk about the sick combos you can pull off with these cards. How about a throne room doubling the effect of a moneylender, letting you trash two worthless cards in your hand permanently and getting a ton of spending power so you can buy a gold. Or like village into like I don't know literally anything because it just draws while giving you extra actions. Second edition introduces some really cool cards too like this crazy ass artisan which lets you take any card worth up to five from the supply and just put it in your hand to use right away. So when you combine a village that gives you two actions with an artisan that can let you take a new action from supply to your hand, then you can only just play any action that you just added. Or you can just get a silver with the artisan to start buying stronger stuff. Maybe you just want to get a strong action card and use the second half of artisan to just put it on top of your deck so you guarantee draw it for your next hand. Second edition cards in general introduce new awesome combo capabilities. You can use Harbinger to take any card from your discard and put it on top of your deck. And then if that card was an action, you can flip it from the top of your deck to play it with Tom Vassal. And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review. Hey everybody. We also want to shout out Curses, which is an amazing mechanic that can slow everyone else's deck down. This is basically when you give their decks a free of charge garbage card that is worth negative points. The cursed parts of their kingdom will feel terrible to draw, and remember, like everything in Dominion, it's built into their decks for them to draw turn after turn. Curses basically force people to deck build a little bit differently whenever they're given out. To play around them, you can choose to buy defensive card, trash the curses, find a way to discard them to keep your hand strong, 
or just find a way to draw a buttload of cards so you don't have to worry about a couple of useless cards. The progression for Dominion is also amazing. Everyone is going to start out as a lowly kingdom with just 7 measly coppers and 3 estates, but then everyone is adding on to their special decks to make it better and better. As this deck gets bigger and better, you can trash cards out of your deck that aren't so good anymore, and then maybe some attack cards like Militia will start to lose their value once people have tons of strong money like gold and silver to buy whatever the hell they want. By the time this mid game rolls around, people are capable of pulling off combos consistently and can sometimes buy multiple things a turn. Then the late game is going to be an utter scramble for points, as there's only so many provinces to buy before it's pile depletes to end the game. Cool thing about this late game is that it can really sneak up on you where you can't just focus on having the fastest, best engine anymore, because combos don't mean anything if you don't get your hands on the high demand provinces. Here it's really tricky to pinpoint when exactly is the best time to go all in on buying points before the game immediately ends, of which won't happen on your turn unless you're clearly ahead. So you don't want to buy these too early because the land cards slow down your deck, but if you buy these too late, you're going to be too behind on points. With all these shifting game states, Dominion has a surprising tactical skill ceiling despite being a simple game to learn. Every single card you buy is permanently with you throughout the game, and there's always the balancing of action cards and money cards, since too much of one without the other is frequently inefficient. And then you can trash cards to try to clean up your deck, or try to hurt or protect against your opponents with defense or attack cards. You're on your toes to react to the dwindling supply piles as others construct their engines, and then your own luck withdraws. There's always so many things you want to buy, with so little money, and so little time. To really own that Dominion deck building skill, you also get a crazy amount of combinations possible with 26 sets of cards. This will constantly keep new games fresh because each game is always going to have 10 sets of cards, and this encourages players to stretch their creativity with new possible combinations that they might not have seen before. Sometimes just adding or removing a card into a set, like a witch that curses people or a festival that allows for a crazy amount of actions, changes the entire strategy for the game. There's going to be new potential for combos that will surprise you even after dozens and dozens of plays, which is just a brilliant mwah. And the game scales well for two to four players. It does feel completely different from two versus four players though, because four will have a lot more interaction with attack cards attacking all opponents and feel more relaxed because of more cards in each deck. At two players, the minion feels a lot like this frantic race where there's a tendency to just buy less attack cards and rush for provinces before the pile runs out. The final pro is that the theme meets the gameplay extremely well, and it makes a lot of sense. Admittedly, it's still pretty dumb and stupid, but it falls right in line with this lighthearted, fast game. So, first of all, the general concept is that you're this chonky rich dude, just hiring people to get more money so he can buy more land, so he can get the best kingdom, so he can say, I am the best chonky rich dude. Okay, premise makes sense. But now imagine how your circus show of a kingdom even operates. Oh, this turn our economy was absolutely marvelous. Those poachers and festivals are paying their weight in gold. And speaking of gold, Bandit, go steal some stuff from that other kingdom. Those guys are dicks. Pero. Oh god, our poachers have hunted the local population of squirrels to extinction. Oof, guess I'll discard this measly copper for reparations to my inconceivable wildlife damage. <laughs> No, but seriously, 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 poacher being good early game, but then falling off later as everything is overhunted is super cool thematically and also absolutely goddamn hilarious. For more funny examples, think about how land cards work. Like, there's only so much land on planet Earth, so of course y'all collectively eventually run out of provinces to buy in the medieval housing market, and then you end the game as a result. Which, if anything, is kind of inaccurate. Like, whatever happened to medieval imperialism, people just stealing land all the time, huh? Or what about building chapels just to cleanse curses from your kingdom, which, might I add, were from witches hired by other kingdoms to curse you? Damn, <laughs> private military witch mercenaries. Then factor in how the cards interact with each other, like you can set up a market to fund your friendly neighborhood militia, and then the militia shows up at your opponent's kingdoms, and there's a moat. So they just go like, Blimey. This really butters my crumpets. That's rubbish. Well, let's just go to the next kingdom then. Maybe they'll have some good biscuits and tea that we can steal. 
And the same goes with a moat protecting against a witch. Like, the witch can't just walk into your village anymore to fling curses because now there's a moat. And we all know that witches can't swim. So now we get to the cons of Dominion. And really, there's only a little bit here holding the game back. The only real substantial con here is that going first in Dominion is always inherently better. See, whenever any of the three supply piles or the province pile runs out, the game immediately ends. That's it. This is a big, big deal in two players, where the first player has a clear cut advantage of having an extra turn over the second. An idea we had to fix this was having the second player start with 8 copper instead of 7 copper. So now let's get into the nitpicks of Dominion. And the first one is one that players will quickly feel is that this game requires a lot, a lot, a lot of shuffling. Okay, yeah, so since the decks only start with 10 cards, this shuffling madness is going to start as soon as when turn 3 rolls around. Like, basically the shuffling is so insane in this shuffling simulator that the better your group is at shuffling, the less downtime you're going to have. So just invest in some sleeves, look up shuffling techniques for Dominion, or you can invest in one of these automatic shuffler monstrosities to annoy your friends. Honestly, if you just pretend to shuffle in Dominion, no one will really notice because there's so much shuffling going on anyway. So yeah, you could totally cheat and uh, get away with it. The second nitpick is that this game can be a little solitaire. This won't matter at all for some groups as Kingdom Sabotage isn't for everyone. But on the other end, for those who want more sinister attacks, there's always the expansions as well. <sighs> We would have liked to see at least one or two more cards that force more interaction in the base set, like maybe the ability to give money to other players with simple politics. So as an example, something like the council room, but for money instead, and you pick which player gets the benefits of just everyone. Though we will point out that second edition is much less solitaire than first edition because players now have better action options to defend against her dirty dare attack card spam, like which. Basically, the game doesn't play itself as much as first edition, and you need to focus more on what people buy to have a general idea of better ways to counter them. The last nitpick is with regards to this card, the moat. This comes from the context of having played and seen other Dominion expansions, and oh my god, their defense cards, or reaction cards as I should call them, are so much more interesting. Moat is an entirely binary card. You either have it or you don't. You hard negate the attack, or it just goes through. It's a feels bad for both the attacker and defender because it sucks to have your attack do nothing, and it sucks when you don't draw your moat as a defender. There's no decision making or nuance here. When you have a moat in your hand, you just leave it in front of you. We understand that moat is meant to be simple and designed for newcomers, but we want to have at least some sort of decision making there. An example would be like making the base effect for moat stronger, and instead have it be discarded to prevent the attack, so that way you have to weigh the value of the moat versus the harm of the attack. Now, onto the scoring. So here at Shelf Side, we try to rate things a little bit differently, because there's two guys running the channel. First, we're going to give you the recommender score, which is how we try to critically evaluate the game by weighing the aforementioned pros and cons. Then, the two of us are going to give you our personal scores, which are our own opinions about the game. Dominion 2nd Edition is going to get a 9 out of 10 from us. It's excellent! But if you really think about it, Dominion 2nd Edition base is kind of like a starter kit to the actual Dominion game. After playing other expansions and evaluating the core mechanics, we can safely say that Dominion, in its entirety, is a 10 out of 10. And going off this whole idea of the starter kit thing, those who are into trading card games like Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh are going to feel at home with this deck builder. There's just so many unique cards that are screaming to be used for awesome combos. Dominion is also very pure to just being a card game. There's no other components whatsoever, which makes it very streamlined. Just do keep in mind that for newcomers, while the game is rather easy to teach and learn, there's a lot of information to take in with all the action cards. So, newcomers will probably just buy whatever sounds fun in their first couple of games. 
And unfortunately, while there are no catch-up mechanics in Dominion, newcomers won't get discouraged because everyone's deck still functions, even if someone is behind. But because of all the reading, early games of Dominion will definitely take longer than 30 minutes. Good thing that the second edition cards are much easier to read now. The shuffling. Yes, the shuffling cannot be ignored in this game. The shuffling is actually so rampant that funnily enough, it's going to reduce the downtime by a good margin because when it's not your turn, you can just be shuffling. The progression actually works pretty well here because the bigger your deck gets, the less frequently you'll have to shuffle. Thank goodness the cards are all good quality. Okay, in all seriousness, you can decide to sleeve these 500 cards to make shuffling faster, but that's going to add some extra cost, and it's going to take some time to sleeve each and every one of these cards. Besides the shuffling shenanigans, the game just flows really well. They took out the cards from first edition that slowed down the game, like the weak spy, or the chancellor that led to even more shuffling, and no one really knew what the hell it did. Really, Dominion just has this one more match flow to it because the game length runs faster the more you play, and consecutive games are so easy to get rolling. You're deconstructing your deck anyways after a game to take out all the land cards, so you might as well make a fresh deck for a new game while you're at it. Yeah, you're gonna want to play Dominion a lot, but the base set still does suffer from becoming a little repetitive over time. Even after crazy amount of diversity from randomization, many times you can ignore like at least a third of the cards in the supply while you focus on your optimal engine. Some turns will just undoubtedly feel like going on autopilot. Like, in late game, if I have eight money, what am I gonna do? Oh, yeah, I just gotta buy a province, duh. But the general repetitiveness of cards only happens after dozens and dozens of plays. You're already getting insane value out of this reasonably priced game. Dominion is still the amazing, streamlined deck builder we highly recommend for any sort of board gamer to at least try. It hits all the right marks for a fast, scalable, and fairly light game, and has so much room for expansions. It balances luck fairly well too, so it's going to interest competitive players, because the decks all start with only 10 cards, and you draw 5 a turn. Dominion 2nd Edition is even more amazing on its own now, and then you probably want to pick up at least one expansion to suit your taste. For my Dominion 2nd Edition base set personal score, I'm gonna give it a... 7 out of 10. I have a pretty good time with it. For more context here, I rated the 1st Edition base set a 4 out of 10, because we played it so much that I got sick of it. And at the time, I wasn't even that aware of all the expansions somehow, so, like, Jesus Christ, Ashton, you are a monster! How the hell did you never buy any expansions after, like, the 50th time we played? Like, a bro, what the hell? Then at some point at the beginning of this year, I got to play Dark Ages at a different friend's place, which completely changed my perspective on Dominion. Like, I remember making this weird, stupid deck that was just full of rats and death carts, which I just found hysterical. And on top of that, I also got to play 2nd edition base, and everything was suddenly all new and fresh again. I still haven't played enough expansion stuff, probably only like, I don't know, like a handful of games of those, but I'd guess that the Dominion experience as a whole, I'd probably rate like 8 out of 10 personally. But 2nd edition base is still ultimately the base set, which is why my personal score is a 7, and that's super generous by the way, because I'm definitely quickly getting sick of it again. But I really don't think that you guys are going to be uncivilized savages and not buy expansions if you like Dominion. But yeah, that's it for me. I grew up always liking card games. Yu-Gi-Oh! was my childhood. I've dabbled in magic at random points in my life, and I grinded the hell out of Hearthstone until the Hong Kong shenanigans last year. Like, I got, like, top 500 legend back during Goblins vs. Gnomes with Mech Druid instead of Undertaker Hunter. So, it feels a good man. My personal score for Dominion is going to be A, 8 out of 10. I have a great time with it. I love my quick card games. I grew up with trading card games where the deck building happened before matches, so the whole deck building in Dominion always fills me with this awesome creative nostalgia for these awesome combos and cards. And then Dominion is super accessible with a wacky theme, so I can have plenty of dumb banter about militias emerging from a town festival, and then cleansing your kingdom of all its sins through a chapel. 
And you know what? I actually kind of like shuffling. Like, I'm not even that mad about all the you have to do in this game. It almost feels like a weird mini game where I'm trying to learn how to shuffle as fast as I can while concentrating on the game. Kind of weird, but I have a good time with that. So while I would rate Dominion as a whole at least a 9 out of 10, this base set of Dominion only gets an 8 because it still feels a little bit autopilot for me because I've played first edition a lot. And yeah, playing this base game hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, I kind of know a lot of the combos that do end up being in the second edition. Okay, yeah. Yeah, call me a monster, but in high school with my limited money, I decided to buy all these BSG expansions instead of the main expansions, and it worked out pretty okay for me. Anyways, the six, seven new cards have continued to make games of this base set of Dominion feel fresh for me, which really shows you how much I love the formula of Dominion. Maybe this review is that extra push I needed to start buying expansions to expand my Dominion experience, huh? I could always go to my friend's house and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, this stock, I can play this maybe like uh, at least a dozen more times. Hmm. Do I need to buy? Do I need to buy? Do I? As always, a big shout out to all our patrons to making videos like this possible. We got John S, Manuel G, Brian C, Clifford H, Aaron W, Max B, Boira, Jeremy M, C, Marius M, Charlie P, Quinton S, Sam S, Travis R, Alvin Y, Vomsi K, Ryan D, Jennifer L, Brett M, Matt G, and Pierre Z. And then we got one more, Spinner71, and then we've got two Mad Lads of Cardboard, we got ZL and Jeff L. We also got a catalog of all the games we recommend down in the description below, so if you want to pick up Dominion 2nd Edition, that might be the place to do it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment on which Dominion expansion is your favorite so I can finally get along to buying at least one Dominion expansion. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.